And stats for the last video here for today. Uh, here is your data, 800 people. You do have to make this correction, add them up. I made a mistake, add them up. That's uh, 752 there, add them up. That's 148 there, please. On number 19, make that correction. Given that a person is a smoker, what's the probability you don't have a code? Degree, so probability no degree given they're a smoker. Yes, write a probability statement there. So they have to be a smoker. There's 148 of them. What's the probability? They don't have a college degree. 124 is the uh, numerator. That is your probability. All right. B, given that they are not a smoker, what's the probability? They have a college degree. So probability degree given no smoke. So given that they don't smoke, 752 is the denominator. Those with the college degree is the numerator. I made a mistake before. That's point. 297c given that a randomly chosen person from this given a randomly chosen person from a sample what is the probability they have a college degree so the whole sample of 900 is involved 247 have a degree probability someone has a degree is 274 given that they do not have a college degree what is the probability that they do not smoke so probability no smoke given no degree 653 do not have a college degree, and 529 of those folks don't smoke, so there you go. Given that a person has a college degree, what is the probability that they do smoke? 247 have a degree, and 24 of those smoke. There's a probability. The urn question, okay? So there's 15 total balls. What's the probability that none of them are orange? So seven out of the 15 are not orange. Then six out of the 14 aren't orange. Then five of the 13 aren't orange. Multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together, there's your probability. What's the probability? At least one of the balls is green. So probability green greater than or equal to one would be the would be one minus the probability of not getting any green for our green. So 11 out of the 15 aren't, 12 out of 14 aren't, nine out of the 13 aren't. The probability of getting no green is three, six, three. One minus that would be six, three, seven. And it's the ineffective units. Please read all of that. What is the probability that a randomly selected unit is defective? So 0.65 probability it's from A. 0 0.02 the probability it's defective from A. Probability it's from B. Probability it is defective. That B is defective. Probability it's from C. Probability that C is defective. Add them all up. That's the probability of you selecting a defective unit. What's the probability of selecting a good unit? One minus the probability that it is defective. Conditional probability, given that it is defective, what's the probability it came from C? So 0 0.030 is the denominator. The numerator is the union or the intersection of it coming from C and being defective. 30% chance that given it is defective, that it came from C. Given that a randomly selected unit is working properly, what's the probability that it came from A? 0.970 needs to be the denominator. The intersection of it coming from A and it being good from A is a 98% chance that it works, that A works. So 0.98 times 0.65, that's the numerator. All right, that would be your probability. 22. If x is binomial with n25 and p 0.26, find the mean and standard deviation of x. The mean is n times p. Standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. q is 1 minus p. There you go. Use the normal approximation to find the probability that x is between 5 and 7. All right. So my mean is 6.5, my standard deviation is 2.19 for C score, negative 0.68. The area so, uh, to the left of that would be 2.483. Then my second Z score, 0.23. The area to the left of that, 59.10. Subtract the 2. That's probability that X is between 5 and 7. This 
one needs to be shown exactly like this. Okay, to show independence, if two things are independent, then the probability of A intersection B, A and B both happen. Here's the probability of A times the probability of B. First off, the probability of A is just a half. Okay, three even numbers, three out of six. Probability of B getting an even roll, there's uh, even sum, there's 18 even sums, 36 of them total, that is one half. So I know that the probability of A times the probability of B is one half times one half, that's a quarter, I do that first. Now, the intersection, A intersection B, means I roll an even number and then I get an even sum. So I need two straight evens. 2, 2, 2, 4, 2, 6, 4, 2, 4, 4, 4, 6. You have to show me all of the A intersection B. That's been the rule the whole year. You have to show me that you know the probability of A intersection B is 9 over 36 because I clearly see the 9. Choices of A and B both happen. The 9 situations where A happens, then B also happens. Okay? 9 out of 36 is a quarter, and a quarter does equal a quarter. So are they independent? Yes. All of that shows me how. Anything missing there will cost us. Instant the lottery, your chance of winning is 0.20. You're going to choose 10. What's the probability that you win exactly two times? They already let you know what X is. 10 choose 2 times probability of success to the second, probability of failure to the eighth. Round all probabilities to three decimals. What's the probability that you win between one and three times? Inclusive. There's my statement. I already know that the probability X is 2 is 0.302. There's probability x is 1. Probability statement for x equals 3. There we go. See what's the probability you win at least one time. Let that get back in focus. Probability you win at least one time is usually always best done by 1 minus the probability you win none. 0 0.80 to the 10th. There's your probability you win at least once. All right, I believe two more pages here. Baseball players, the lifetime batting average of 305. We expect the player to get 500 at bats this upcoming season. Let X be the number of hits the player will get. Find the mean and standard deviation of X. N times P is the mean. Always round to two decimal places. Standard deviation is square root of N times P times 1 minus P. Normal approximation time to find the probability that the player will get at least 140 hits this upcoming season. I do need that statement. Find the probability. So probability X is greater than or equal to 140. Z score is negative 1.21. Look that up. That is 1131. Greater than or equal to subtracted. We would expect the player to have a good chance of doing something. That would be on the easy side. If the player is supposed to get 150.2 hits in 500 bats, then we would assume it's very close to certain that they would do better than 140. If you are an A-plus student, what's the probability you get at least a C-minus on a test? Hopefully close to 100% or probability of 1, which this is very close to that. Find the probability a player will get at least 165 hits this upcoming season. Thus, probability is going to be lower because this would be a better than average results. Probability that x is greater than or equal to 165. This z-score is the opposite of what we just got. I'm going to do 1 minus that 8869 to get 1131. Venn diagram time, 225 underclassmen math majors of a certain university were asked whether they had taken Calc 1 or Calc 2 in the past year. 142 said they had taken Calc 1, 193 said they had taken Calc 2, and 127 have taken both. You start with the 127 in the middle. 142 had taken Calc 1, so you do 142 minus 127. That means 15 had only taken Calc 1. 193 had taken Calc 2, do 193 minus 127. 66 had taken Calc 2 only. Some of them have taken neither and might and are yet math majors. Either they're well advanced and I guess started with Calc 3, or they say they're math majors and they will only be math majors for a short time. Take 225 minus anything in a circle. 17 had taken neither of the two. What's the probability they've only taken Calc 2? That's at 66 over 225. 
What's the probability they've taken neither? That is the 17 over 225. And what's the probability that they have taken only calc 1? That is the 15 over 225. Write those probability statements just like that. And the last page for today, you flip a coin three times, state the sample space. You either get heads or tails. That's two choices raised to the third power. That means there's going to be eight total. I started with all the chances of three heads, then two heads, then three tails, then two tails. That is all of them. The order, what you put in there doesn't matter. They need to be eight distinctly different outcomes there, though. All right. Find the probabilities. A occurs with probability 0.4. B occurs with probability 0.5. A and B are independent. So the probability of A and B, that's the probability of A intersection B. From two pages ago, we know that the probability of A intersection B is the probability of A times probability of B. Now, that's not something that would be given on a formula sheet, but you can have this at your disposal on your final, so you should know that one. Have that one written down. C and D are two events. It doesn't say that they're independent, but we know the probability of C or D. The probability of any A union B is A plus B minus their intersection. So the probability of C or D, sorry, is probability of C plus probability of D minus their intersection. There we go, 0 0.70. Confidence interval times, 64, that's greater than or equal to 30 for sure. I'll let you use Z star for that. 90% confidence interval, Z star would be 1.645. This is mean, rounded to two decimals. There's your confidence interval. 95% confidence interval, Z star 1.96. Notice the more confident you get, the standard, the margin of error will have to increase. 99% confidence interval Z star is 2.576. There's your final confidence interval. All right, that is about 40% of what you have in your final exam review guide. Do these questions, write out a bunch of notes. This is how I want you to show you your work <clears throat> on the final. Yak Math Videos, signing out.